So you're into 3D printing. You've got yourself a nice 3D printer, whether it's a Creality, a Solvol, Bamboo, Prusa, you name it. Doesn't matter what you're using, but you want to step up from doing something really cool like helmets and stuff into something completely different. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to make some hue forges. Now, if you don't know what a hue forge is, a hue forge is a 2D image that is 3D printed using multiple colors. Hue forge is the actual program we're going to be using to design these. So you can take any image really and layer it over itself with the different colors based in it and create a really cool 3D printed painting. These are bookmarks that I created from uh, Bamboo Lab. These are Star Wars based bookmarks. As you can see, they've got four colors in them. I am gonna show you how to do something just like this. And stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how you might be able to win one of these bookmarks. Now, I use a number of different printers from Solvol to Creality, Bamboo. But what I don't have is something you may be familiar with if you've been in the 3D printing community for a while, is an AMS or a CFS if you're with Creality. This is a multi filament system. So this allows you to print in multiple colors and it will change the color mid layer, mid line, and it will print multicolored prints. I don't have one. I don't have an AMS for my bamboo. I don't have a CFS or anything that can do multicolor printing, but it doesn't mean I can't do multicolor printing. Now we talked about the printer. I said, it doesn't matter which printer you're using and you don't need to have an AMS or a multicolor system, multi-filament system. What about the program we're going to use to slice? Doesn't matter if you're going to be using the Creality Print, you're gonna use Orca Slicer, Cura, you name it. You can do this on any of these slicing programs. Basically, the skills are fairly transferable. If you've used any of these before, you know that they're all based off each other. They're all really similar. If you learn with one, you'll be able to go into the other. We're gonna do it with Orca Slicer today. So let's quickly look at what a hue forge looks like. Here's some examples here. I showed you the bookmarks before, but here's a Pikachu example I've done before. It doesn't matter if you're into making your own fan art or you want to do something that's based on your favorite I don't know, movie series, or maybe you just want to do something cool like Spider-Man. So where do we get hue forge? If you just jump onto hueforge.com, or just Google Hue Forge, uh, you're going to get the site for the software itself. So we go straight to Hue Forge. You'll see that you do have to purchase this. Uh, there are several different tiers to it, but you're just going to get your private license if you don't want to be selling these things. If you're just doing it for yourself, just grab the private one. Don't worry about the commercial. At the minute, you will see that it is actually on sale in Australia, so it's down to $39 Australian. Now, I know this is a little bit pricey for software, but this software is certainly worth it if you're going to be doing a number of different prints or designs like this. It's a great software. I highly recommend it. So now we've downloaded it, we've installed it onto our computer, and this is what it looks like when we open it. We're going to jump over and import our image. So we just found an image on Google of Spider-Man that we liked. Uh, I grabbed one with a black background because I wanted that to be the primary thing. It's easier to start with a black background if you're just getting started with Hue Forge. But here it is, Spider-Man BB. Now it does come up in black and white, as you can see here. We have the original image on the right, and on the left, we've got what it's going to print like. There's only three things we need to focus on here. It's our layer heights, our original layer heights, our base layer height. We're going to want to focus on our color sliders over on the left here. And the last thing is going to be our brightness. So we can adjust this brightness to change what we see and the different layers. Now, the layers are going to change with the number of layers we have here. We are going to end up with just 11 but we'll ignore this bit for now. We're just going to jump down into our color sliders. Obviously, we want it to be this black, then red. We're going to finish off with gray and white. So 
So how we do that, our first layer is already red. Now we have a number of different filaments we can choose and add. So we're actually going to add a filament. So we're going to select a color or select a filament. We're going to add a new filament. We can do this by sliding our color slider over here to the color that we want. Ultimately, guys, the color that you see on the screen isn't going to be exactly what you get. You can base this off different filaments like the bamboo filaments, the uh, sunloo filaments. But if you just buy a generic red filament, we're just going to get a generic red. So this just fills it in for now to show us what it's going to look like. We can actually go over and just select our color, though. Um, and add that. So we now want to change our layers from our blacks, our reds, our greys and our whites that we all have selected here so that it matches up with what we have on the right. This is looking pretty beautiful guys. Now as I said we're going to have different layers and different things. We're going to go and edit that later. We don't need to add in any more colors right now because we already have gray and white in here. We're going to come up here and change our base layer and our layer height, guys. Now, normally I'm working with a 0.06 layer height, so we're going to change that. And our base layer, we want to leave at 0.16. Now, a lot of people print Hue Forges at 0.16 layer height and 0.16 base layer, but this is what we're going to do for today. Now, if you are getting a Hue Forge straight off the internet, it will give you these settings. We're also going to print every Hue Forge we do with 100% infill, guys. If we're doing them like this. If you don't want to shine a light through it, then we don't have to. Our next move is to export our STL. So it says we haven't saved the project yet. Why not? Let's go ahead and save our project. We're just going to call it Spider-Man and save and we're going to save the stl now and again it's going to be spider-man bb i'm just going to check it here on the desktop it'll be easier to find easy done now we're going to come over to orca slicer we're going to start a new project and we're going to import our stl so coming up and importing our STL, we just want this Spider-Man BB, and here it is here. Now guys, we want to come over and change our layer height. It has to be the same that we put in before, ignoring this one for now. But we want it to be 0.06 and our base layer of 0.16. Also jumping over to strength, guys, as I said, we want to make sure our infill is set at 100%. So when we come down to sparse infill, it'll usually be set as 15% as just a standard, but we want it to be 100% for our hue forges here. And we want to make sure that our bottom layers as well, everything is 100% guys. Now I want to get the most out of my bed size guys. So I scaled mine up. What you have to make sure you do though is if you scale it up, come back and scale this uh, Z axis. You don't want to add extra layers. It's going to screw up what you have done in your Hue Forge. Anyway, we're going to slice that plate, guys. And you'll see here it's going to take just over an hour to print. But right now it's printing as one standard piece. We don't have an AMS. We're not going to split it up into colors. So what we need to do is come back here and check where our different colors and layers come into play and at what layer they say to change our filament. And we'll come back into our Orca Slicer and we're going to take this over here on the right and move it up and down until we have the correct layers and layer height to match what it says in our Hue Forge. Now what I've done guys is just right clicked on those layers and pressed add pause. So that's going to add the three pauses so we can go back and change our filament to these four different colors. Now, after we've added in our pauses so we can change the filament, we're going to slice that plate again. And we're now ready to export our G code, guys, and send it over to our printer. 
And instead of having to watch and go and manually pause, it will pause at each layer, give us a notification if we have the right printer, and we can just go and change the filament as if we've run out of filament. Change the colors and you're gonna get a beautiful hue forge, guys. Now, if you want to, guys, you can actually just jump straight into Thingiverse or where you get your files, and we can actually just type in HueForge. People have already done a lot of this and prepped a lot of the files for you already, but they won't have sliced it. So you are going to have to set these same layers and pauses in your slicer. But how do you know which layer to do then? It's quite simple, guys. We're gonna scroll on down and people will have usually put it into their summary. They'll tell you what colors you're gonna use and at what layer height and layer number. It's as simple as that, guys. So you can grab any hue forge you want and chuck it into practice. And here's the end result, guys, of that Spider-Man hue forge. I hope you guys have fun and enjoy making these awesome pieces of artwork. Don't forget, I am giving away two of those bookmarks. The way you get them is by commenting on this video. What's the first thing you would print as a hue forge? And make sure you guys are subscribed. I will be picking someone to win one of those in the next few weeks and I am giving away two guys so good luck